There we go. Yep, right and on. now, album five of six. Another right. Springsteen cut. We're going Another back in time, though. Yeah, we are. Yeah, this is. We'll yeah, rewind. we're going to talk about this second because our 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 cold listens are still in '82, and our regular listens are now in '84. So we're we're going to have to we'll do some remedying with that. We'll we'll try to catch up a little bit. But anyway, this is Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska, coming in at number 41 in the 1980s on Best Ever Albums, number five in 1982, number 332 of all time. It's Springsteen's fourth highest rated album behind Born in the USA at number three. Darkness on the Edge of Town at number two and Born to Run at number one. We've covered all of those. Um, I think this also represents the last time we talk about Springsteen. So uh, so get your fix in here, John. Do all your impressions. Get them all ready because this is the last one. Um, Springsteen, again, comes in at number 19 of all-time artists on Best Ever Albums. And this is the only album we're covering tonight, fellas, that came in on Rolling Stone's list. And it, it did so at number 150. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about this last week with... Um, Born in the USA that, you know, that Springsteen basically wrote the songs from this album and the ones in Born in the USA at the same mm -hmm. time um, and just based, decided to separate them based on, you know, he wanted something to be more acoustic and raw and stripped down, which is what Nebraska was. And then um, the number of songs he didn't feel like were, were best served by that type of sound. That's when he recorded with the E Street Band for Born in the USA. And man, what a different, it's such a different album than what we covered last week. Um, it's really interesting that these are songs written at the same time because that, you know, as we talked about, Born in the USA is being much more produced and bombastic and poppy. And this is like, this is melancholy and yes. depressing and and raw and, and stark. And, you know, it's just a, a, you know, Springsteen and a guitar and a, occasional harmonica and very little frills i think he just did all this on a four track that's what they say he recorded this on a four track in his bedroom um so it's a unique album i i, I do like it it's not my favorite i like springsteen loud and rocking out and that's where i think he really shines but i think that this is a cool little departure from that it's um and the more i listened to it the more i liked it i, I do like the first half better i would say um mm -hmm. i think atlantic for me atlantic city is the best song on here musically anyway um you know and i just i've, I've always loved the way that that guitar kind of comes in with the harmonica um i like the chorus and um he, he does like I, I just love springsteen's voice on it just such a cool and it's such a cool chorus you know the the, the the lyrics on that i really do like um i will say that earlier in the week when i had this on i didn't I didn't give this a lot of intent listens, oddly enough, which I probably should have. Um, it was kind of a little bit more. I put it on as I was doing the dishes or at work or whatever, and um, and it didn't resonate as much. But then just like earlier today, I just had I put on like, let me just put it on my headphones and just like try to focus more on it. And it, it, it definitely was a much better listening experience, which, of course, makes sense for this. But a song like Highway Patrolman. Um, which I, you know, I, I didn't really pay much mind to that when I was just listening to in the background, much better song when I was like really giving it its due, uh, mm -hmm. its due time. Um, you know, uh, really liked my father's house, very similar to that. Um, you know, uh, so there's not many does. I think state trooper might be the song. I, I don't like him yelping like in that, that's just, I, I don't know if that like towards the end of that, that kind of threw me off a little bit, but, um, mansion on the Hill is a pretty song. Johnny 99 is a cool little riff riff song going on there. Um, mm -hmm. so just kind of a unique album for Springsteen. I like it when, when artists depart, uh, even though it might not be uh, Springsteen at his best for me, I just, it, it's showing a different side of him, uh, you know, sonically, at least I, I think, I, th I think lyrically, there's still a lot of like the blue collar kind of, you know, d down and down and out, down and, sure. you know, uh, out of luck and whatnot. Um, you know, maybe a little bit more with the maybe a little bit more with the theme of like the outlaw, like in murdering people. That's a little that might be a little bit of a different uh, take on things for him. But uh, but I do. I, I, yeah, I like it. And it's you know, it's it's in some ways it's him doing his Dylan thing, you know, doing the early Dylan thing, which I love Dylan. So I'm OK with that. And I like acoustic folk music. And that's kind of what you're getting like the the folk Americana mm -hmm. uh, singer songwriter album is what this is. So yeah. uh, so I'm thumbs up on this. It's uh, it's definitely different. It's not where I would if somebody wanted to get into Springsteen. This is a this is a deeper cut. Um, this is not what he's known for. Um, or like I said, my favorite, but, uh, it's a nice little palate cleanser, something different, something, uh, you know, a little off the beaten path for him and, uh, and really solid, you know, still good songwriting. So uh, thumbs up for me. Can you imagine any of these songs on Born to Run? I sure yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty different, right? Yeah. 
Here's my hot take this week. Is Bruce Springsteen better on acoustic than he is with all of the bells and no. whistles behind him? No. <laughs> okay. Well, that we can argue that for a long time, <laughs> but the uh, I really like this album. I've kind of always really liked it. I think he works really well as an acoustic artist. You know, maybe it maybe it wouldn't work as well if he always did it this way, but this seems like a it's a fun kind of departure from what you're used to in Springsteen. Um, I think his his uh, voice and his aesthetic really work well with this type of music. I mean, he's mm. he's sticking to his storytelling. Um, that's apparent on this, especially on well, every song is is a story pretty much, and and the blue collar nature, the kind of uh, down and out. Uh, Dust Bowl, mid Midwest yeah. Americana, old time, almost like forties, a Depression era stories, country inflected or country tinged music. That all works really well on here, and um, his voice is really great in telling these stories. Uh, I agree, Matt. The songs are like kind of very sad and melancholy, a little nostalgic, which is no he's no stranger to in in his music um i really like the harmonica on Mm -hmm. here that comes a lot uh come makes an appearance a lot you know often at the start or even at the end uh throughout the songs the um uh they're simple guitar chords but done well Uh, i like when he yells and makes those sounds in the songs at the end and uh it, it just kind of really uh captures kind of uh a time and place really well on this album Uh, it may be kind of a a fantasy time and place of some uh unrealistic version of america but uh it it kind of made me you know it's kind of a romanticized version of that period of america but uh you know i I kind of bought it hook, line, and sinker, and I kind of go along for the ride and really like it. Uh, The the first song, Nebraska, sounds like the plot of Badlands. I don't know if you guys have seen that Terrence Malick movie. I think it is kind of... No, it's In Cold Blood, man. Oh, oh, okay. It's the story of those murders. Yeah, that's why it's called Nebraska. Okay, well, that makes sense. It's also similar to the movie Badlands, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, But Isn't that about those murders? I think it might be loosely based on that. Yeah. Uh, stars Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek. Um, that may, that would make sense uh, if it was based on that. But I'll have to clean that stack for next week. And um, I don't know. I just kind of like the vibe of this album. I could see the argument that the songs all sound the same after a certain point if you're, if you're listening to the album the whole way through. But uh, I think there's enough variety here or differences in either what he's singing about or kind of what feeling he's bringing to each song that that works for me i agree matt i think the first side is quite a bit stronger than the second side although to be fair the first side technically is six songs and the last is four so it is lopsided in terms of time but um i think you've got i mean there's not really a bad song in the first six so from nebraska all the way through state trooper and um i, agree I wouldn't too. say that there's a bad i mean i i don't think there's a bad song period um, yeah i just think they're yeah. better probably up front yep yeah i think atlantic city well nebraska atlantic city or johnny 99 are probably my my standout yeah. tracks on on this album but um this is one of those albums like you said matt that's when when you first start listening to springsteen this is kind of like the next step if you haven't heard it before and it kind of like opens opens him up away in a way that uh you might not be familiar with if you only heard like born to run or something yeah and this is even for springsteen fans like there's probably plenty of springsteen fans that don't like this that this you know this isn't what i you know but this is probably for the people that kind of want to explore a little bit more you you know what else has he got you know if that's uh yeah this would definitely do that not surprised this is on the Rolling Stone list, but I've always had yeah. a, a soft spot for this album. And this is the only album this week that I was actually familiar with, too. Mm. So maybe that is uh, affecting my review, but I, I really like this album. Yeah, I find this a very interesting album. Um, I don't know if the genre itself, like, stri- I, I think I read one time that 
these are basically demos that Bruce mm. Springsteen did, right? Is that the the concept? I mean, he basically, yeah, well, yeah, because he like just he would write he, songs like this and then he turned them into Bruce Springsteen songs, right? And for this one, right. he's just like, all right, I'm just gonna write them. Well, and yeah, he them, recorded right? he recorded them on a four track. He tried some of these with the band, you know, and then realized that him and Landau, the producer and manager, decided right. these are these are way better as they as the, as you recorded them at your in your bedroom. So just leave it like that. So yeah, essentially, they are kind of demos like that, John. Yeah. Yeah, this is a fascinating album because Bruce Springsteen usually writes such personal songs that seem tied to his own experience, I think, to some degree. And in this, he's doing much more of a bystander mm -hmm. as a lyricist. I actually, I think this is by far the best Springsteen album lyrically. Um, I I say, and, and Springsteen's got some, I make fun of him a lot, but he's got some gems in his other stuff, but it's mixed with, you have to do a lot of the eye roll too. This he plays it dead straight here yep. on these albums. I I think Nebraska is a pretty fantastic song lyrically, and I I know that one's about the in cold blood murders. Um, the Truman Capote book. Yeah, I read it. Atlantic City is also based on a true story. It's a very New Jersey song, like about organized crime and sort of union bosses and stuff. It's it's like about where a world that Bruce Springsteen's going to know in the same way I do without being in it, right? You just kind of, if you grow up in New Jersey, you sort of know that world exists. And it's about the idea of Atlantic City as the place you go for like a long weekend, right? And sort of an aspirational place. But there's very good songwriting on this. It's very sparse. So as mm -hmm. a result, it's it's not an album you put on at any time. Um, I was open to it when I had it here, but it's not an album I go seek out. And I think some of that is not Bruce Springsteen's fault. It's just a genre of music that is not my favorite type of music. But I, I definitely think this is an album that shows Bruce Springsteen, the songwriter, at his best. I also find it such a fascinating album because, like I said, he's he's um, it's less personal. He's way more observational on this, as I mentioned before, but also... He's stripped down. There's none of the the fat that sometimes is in the 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 E Street Band songs. It's it's lean, mm -hmm. right? What he's doing mm -hmm. here sonically is also lyrically. Um, he's not wasting lyrics along the way. And it's just funny that after this, he'd do Born in the USA, yeah. which is such yeah. a departure. And you know, the river is the opposite of being lean, right? It's just this huge spot, you know, gigantic album yeah. right that's i would i think i called it gratuitous when we covered it and mm. it is this this is not gratuitous this is him so and you wonder where he was at in a headspace point of view because we talked about how depressed darkness and the river <laughs> and born in the usa are like pretty depressing in their own way but here he's talking about sort of like he's talking about like the evil that men do kind of in a lot of it. there's mm -hmm. a couple inspirational songs but you know, like songs like Highway Patrolman, it's like a cop trying to save his brother and he can't do it. And mob, you know, mobsters, spree killers, you know, there's all yeah. these different. It's just he has a sort of a dim view of humanity where kind of I always take Springsteen as like he looks at these characters, but he has sympathy for these characters, even as he's sort of passing judgment on them, I guess, or just allowing them to pass judgment on themselves. This is much more of a like a outlaw country sort of. Yep. hero like the heroes on this so it's it's such an interesting spot and then for him to go to born in the usa and go broad and pop and then later you know i think tunnel of love is a very personal album you know yeah as much it's as divorce Springsteen. yeah and it's like and this just seems such a, a like um anachronistic kind of like in his discography so yep. i find it fascinating yeah. on on that end of things um so, yeah, I, I would say this one gets a, a, a thumbs up for me. Uh, am I going to say it's like my favorite work of Springsteen? No, but lyrically it probably is. I think this one, this one is like what happens if you get Springsteen writing without the, the stuff that I don't. If I said uh, Born in the USA last week was like all the stuff I like is Springsteen without, you know, the stuff that I don't like. I mean, it still had some of the hokey lyrics at times. This one sort of cuts out all of the the frills and the sentimental. I mean, this is not a sentimental album, which no. is always shocking to me because Springsteen's always sentimental, and this has no yeah. sentiment. It's harsh. You're right. Um, and I think that's fascinating lyrically. Yeah. yeah. So, John, just a quick fact check. It actually isn't based on In Cold Blood, Nebraska. It isn't. No, really? it's based on the, the uh, 19-year-old killer Charles Starkweather and his 14-year-old girlfriend, 
Carol Ann Fugit, which but isn't the that movie what Badlands in Cold Blood's is based about? on. No. Isn't that what In Cold Blood's about? In or Cold Blood's about murder? two guys. Um, yeah, different murders. Uh, different, different murders. Not oh, in sorry. Nebraska, too, I think. But um, yeah, actually, not only Badlands, but Natural Born Killers is based on on oh, that sorry. story. So, hmm, but I no, I can so totally, I can yeah. totally get why you would think that. There's definitely similarities there, and obviously, murders involved. So, um, well, go yeah, back to Josh's commentary. He was right <laughs> along the way. Well, and it's interesting. Can- you- Go ahead. Terrence Malick, didn't he? He did that movie that I love that everybody else hated in the The 2000s, Thin Red Line? Right? No, the Something of Life. Days uh, of Heaven? Oh, no, didn't he Tree do, of Life? I love The Tree, Tree of Life. Life. Yeah, yeah, I love that great. movie, but a lot of people hated that movie, but I, I can, really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting you say that, that. You're bringing up a good point about op, the observational Springsteen as opposed mm-hmm. to the, the narrative, you know, first person. And that's, that's a very much, that was like a Dylan trait as well. I remember you commenting oh, on yeah. like a lot of Dylan stuff is very much like, not personalized it's just him viewing the world around him and so there's that there's a connection there as well so for sure this is the most dylan springsteen oh yeah by quite a bit. oh yeah. yeah it's hard not to think of that i mean i'm sure that that was part of i don't know if that was on his mind though because like i said i, I think mean, woody like, guthrie was also I woody got yes, yes. yeah that's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's a good that's mm-hmm. a very good point yep for sure yeah interest this is such an interesting counterpoint to born in the usa since they're all kind of written at the same time yeah songs. it's like yeah and yeah and then, he, and then he thought of putting it out as like a double album like yeah. you know what i mean like just that, just it's so that truly it is he so didn't different. need to do that i yeah. think yeah. he should have learned from the river <laughs> yeah so. but uh yeah i i think it's a uh, yeah you bring up a good point john he's he's he is removed in a way and telling these songs that he is not on pretty much all of his other albums that we've discussed well, good. Yeah, that makes I, up for me whiffing on the storyline then of Nebraska. So, I think, um, and I also want to say that like some of these songs he used on, um, like he he brought to the band and they like it was called the what is it, the Nebraska Electric Nebraska Sessions or something like mm-hmm. that. And I think some of these songs that that they did electric they never released officially, but I think that I think they're on a his tracks. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Box set. Mm-hmm. perhaps so maybe i think these might be out there as rocking songs perhaps i'll i'll, I'll clean that stack because i can't i can't remember exactly what that is but there's springs that's the other thing about it. he wrote so many freaking songs around this time and he just never and that's what stevie van zandt was saying is like i can't believe like the world is gonna go through is, is gonna he, not hear these songs like he's got so yeah. much more that's that's going on but um but i think that he did release some of them through that tracks box set well there we go there's so, nothing if not a lot of um, non-album Springsteen content. My God, I don't know if there's yeah. anybody who has as much non-album content as Springsteen does. True. I mean, he's got his own podcast for crying out loud. <laughs> With Obama. <laughs> so yeah. thumbs up from all three of us, though, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like 